Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. This will be another lesson in the Zero to Hero series using Blender. If you enjoyed it or learned something, feel free to like the video and to subscribe for daily Blender, Unity 3D, coding, Photoshop, and all sorts of other videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So today I'm going to be creating what is called your first render or our second model because you may remember if you've followed the series or seen it before we did our first model which was a coffee cup and we also did another lesson which was how to UV unwrap a box where we took a box we uh, painted on it and then we we took it back into blender so that we had a basically painted on box we're gonna build on those two concepts today because we're going to be modeling and UV unwrapping and creating and rendering a milk container. I feel that this went along well because our first model was a milk cup. Now I've already cut this apart for a part of the lesson, but you get you know the basic shape of a milk container. You know what it looks like. It's a it's basically a box with a pyramid on top or with a triangle on top and a little tip. That's all there is to it. Very basic. Just to quickly go over some some basic ideas. So we're going to be creating a milk carton. So the first thing we need to think of are what are the basic shapes? Well, it's a cube. A cube that's extended a little bit so it's more of a rectangle. And like I said, it's got a little uh, triangle shape on top. That's the same size as the cube on top the cube's top and then when it comes to uv unwrapping it we need to think about how we're going to do that so that takes a little bit of problem solving and we're going to think about are we going to use third party programs to paint on it like gimp photoshop or paint or are we going to use blender's internal texture painting i decided that the texture painting is a little too advanced for this tutorial and it's not quite it's not something i use commonly i use the third party program mari to do any sort of texture painting so we're just going to bring it into something like gimp photoshop or paint to do the actual color and lastly we need to do a little bit more planning like are we gonna do a clean milk container is it gonna be dirty with like some crusty milk on it and stuff like that and we also got to decide on our colors and so I've decided that we're gonna do just a simple clean basic container it's gonna have some text on it and it's gonna be pink on white because that's what most milk containers in Canada uh, look like. And I don't know in the States, but I assume they would be similar. Pink is just associated with milk for some reason. So let's get into Blender and let's get started. In Blender, I've reloaded all the factory settings except for just a few settings that I've changed that I, I like and that I recommend. Let's go into user preferences, file user preferences, and I'll show you them. And the first is disable Python tooltips. They just get in the way. I've made the mini axis as big as possible and as bright as possible I've disabled cursor depth and turned on auto depth and I've enabled zoom to mouse position that's a very important one then but that'll make zooming much easier and under editing I've just turned undo from 32 up to the maximum which is 64 so that's all there is to it let's save our user settings close that off I'm gonna turn on screencast keys for you guys so that you can see what I'm pressing okay cool so we can first get rid of the animation timeline here so to do that we're just gonna grab the corner and we're gonna drag it down till that arrow shows up in the middle and then let go of the left mouse button and it will get rid of that window we don't need it and so we have a few basic things here we have our properties panel which has all our properties of our scene we have our outliner panel which shows all our objects in our scene and that's about all there is to it and then there's this is our 3d view as you can see down here we have 3d viewport selected so this is your 3d viewport this is where we're going to be doing most of our work and we're also going to be using the gizmos or manipulators as they're called in blender that's these things right here to manipulate our objects wherever possible for simplicity's sake so let's get started first of all we need to 
drag our object onto the floor because we don't want it going through the floor like it currently is. So we're going to take our cube and we're going to drag it up along the Z axis till it's just on the floor. Now the Z axis is the blue one that is up and down or depth. And uh, Y is the, is the uh, green one and that is forward and back and X is the red one and that is left and right. So you can think of it as up and down, forward and back, left and right. And they go in positive and negative directions just like the X and Y graphs that you would have done in high school. Now. Another thing I'm going to bring up is snapping. That's this little option down here. Now you can enable it permanently by pressing the magnet button and that will always snap. So now if we uh, click and hold on this, you'll see how it automatically snaps one blender unit, which works out to about 3.3 meters. But we don't want that continuously on. To temporarily enable it whenever you're whenever you're transforming something like this all you got to do is hold down control and you'll now see it snaps and when I let go of control snapping is disabled and if I hold down control and then hold down shift it goes in smaller increments it now goes in point or in yeah in point one increments so a tenth of a blender unit or about 33 centimeters but I'm going to go back to the beginning. So we're going to use increment snapping to start with. There's increment, vertex, edge, face, and volume. But we're only going to be working with increment snapping and possibly vertex snapping. So let's grab it up along the, the Z axis. So up and down. And let's hold down control for snapping. And let's get it setting just on the floor. So one unit up, just like that. So it's now sitting right on what is called the grid floor. However, the grid floor is completely see-through. If we go into preview rendered mode, you can see there's no ground there. So let's create one very quickly. Back in solid mode, what we need to do... Whoops, I moved my 3D cursor. Your 3D cursor, if you don't remember, is where uh, all your work is done from. This is where objects are created at. This is where rotation can be done from. The 3D cursor does a variety of tasks. Now, we want our 3D cursor back in the center here. Actually, I'm going to turn on the Z-axis too, just so you guys can get a little bit more idea there. I've turned on the blue Z-axis too in the viewport so you can see that. That's not enabled by default, but if you want it, you press N, you go under the Display tab, and you can enable or disable any of the axes you want. You can also turn off the grid floor, and you can also make it bigger or smaller, and you can also turn uh, up the scale bigger or smaller, and so on and so forth. And we're going to leave it like that. So, we've got our basic cube set up now. Now we need to create a floor. So we need to snap our 3 cursor to the very center of our scene, because right now it's way off in way off in 3D space. So to do that, we need to snap to center. So to do that, you would press Shift S and then cursor to center. Or you can just go Object, Snap, Cursor to Center if you prefer the menus. I'm going to be doing the menus today just to keep things simple for you guys. So Object, Snap, cursor to center. You'll now see our 3D cursor is in the center of our grid. That's perfect. So now let's add a floor. Let's do that by going add mesh plane. Now a plane is just simply, as you can see from below, it's just simply a 2D shape. Well, not 2D. It does have two sides to it, but it's basically just a flat object. It says flat as anything can get in a 3D program, but we need to make it bigger. That's a very small floor right now. So to do that, we're going to click down here on our manipulator panel, and we're going to choose scale. There's transform, which is to move it. There's rotate, which is obviously to rotate it. And there's scale, which is to make it bigger or smaller. So we're going to scale it. So let's scale it in the Y axis till it reaches the edge of our grid floor and let's scale it in the x-axis till it reaches the edge of our grid floor. Perfect, we now have a floor. Next, let's make our milk container. So let's right click on our milk container to select it. And actually in the outliner window up here, we can rename our objects so that we can know so that we know what they are. You can see down here it just says cube. Let's double click on the cube and let's call it milk container. 
let's uh, double click on plane as well and just call it floor. Now let's click on milk container once just to select it and let's go into edit mode. So click on object mode and let's go into edit mode. So now let's create that extended box shape that a milk container has. To do that, let's select face select. You know what faces are. Faces are this entire part. Lines are right here. And vertexes are just these points right here. So vertex, line, face. So we want face mode and we want to select the top face. And we don't want to scale it. That doesn't do anything. We want to go back to transform the first one and we want to drag it along the z-axis up until we get the shape we want which is about right there so about three units yeah let's go for an even three roughly next we need to create the little triangle on top so to do that we're going to do what's called extruding so extruding is just as it sounds imagine you're playing with play-doh and you have a piece of plastic with a circle cut into it and you push the play-doh through it that would create a circle that comes out on the other side so that's the same kind of idea so to do that we go mesh extrude region so that extrudes whatever we have selected and if we move our mouse you can see that it extrudes automatically along the axis that it is pointed in so since it's pointed perfectly vertical it's going to extrude along the z-axis automatically for us so we want to extrude it about 1.5 units roughly just so, and then you can imagine we're going to to get that just imagine that triangle shape there being the top of your, the container so it could even be a little bit smaller if you wanted and at any time you can play with this size by dragging this up and down so we'll leave it somewhere around there now we need to get that triangle shape so to do that we're going to go into line select mode and we're going to select this edge by right clicking on it and then we're going to hold down shift. Now you may know from Windows by holding down shift and clicking on stuff, you're allowed to select more than one at once. You can do the same in Blender other than we're using right click to select. So we've right clicked to select this edge. Now we're going to hold down shift and right click on the other edge. And you'll now see we have both selected. The currently or the last one you selected is in white and the ones that you selected before that will always be in orange. To get this into our triangle shape, we we can't use this this uh, manipulator, the transform one. That just moves it. So I'm gonna right click to undo that or to escape that. What we need to do is we need to scale it in. So we're gonna scale along the y-axis in until we get the triangle shape, and it'll get a little bit wonky. So we need to zoom in a little more, and we need to keep going in until we get the shape we want. Something like that is perfect for me. Now I could go further and I could create a little flap up top, but that makes things a little more complicated, so I'm not gonna go that complicated today. We could also we could also um create the little indent by poking it, and then I could take that vertex and I could I could move it along the X and I could create that little indentation, but again I'm not gonna get that complicated today. For today, we're just going to stick with basic shapes and basic geometry because I'm going to this the whole idea behind this tutorial is your first render more than modeling. So we've now got our milk container created. Now we need to give it some color. So the first thing we need to do is we need to give it a material because right now it has no material. If we go into rendered view, it's just it looks like it was just basically created on a computer in about 30 seconds and it basically could be so let's go back into solid view that's this you can your views are down here and let's add a material that's this little ball down here make sure you have milk container selected and it looks like it's already applied a material for us a stock material if not just hit new the button will be right here so we can get rid of everything. All we need is diffuse. Diffuse means color. So for example, if I turn this to bright green, you can see that its color is green. So it's diffused it green. But we're gonna use bright white because the color doesn't matter since we're gonna be painting it ourselves. So that's good. We have a material that's all we need to worry about there. 
we have a diffuse material, we're happy. That's completely fine for our needs. Next, we need to do UV unwrapping. 